Hey, 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 I'm back again once more with Star Rail. You're going a bit too, you're going a bit more into Star Rail lately. <laughs> Don't also want to like get into more Final Fantasy 14 once I get, get the time to. But yeah, we're back here. More shenanigans on the law of four, I'm expecting. With wolves, with like still a war dance going on, at least I hope. <laughs> actually do want to see how this one continues. And the facial, which I've actually already managed to build. <laughs> well, I <laughs> also overdid it a bit on your crit rate, but hey, we, we can use her this time around because I actually should, should be fully done. Yeah. I just stole the light cone from her, but hey. I'll get it sorted out eventually. <laughs> it will be fine. I don't want to like mess around too much already. I just want to like immediately go into the story and see where this, where this takes us. I'm actually kind of quite curious where they are like going with this whole Boris and Warden stuff. What they are Short setting respite, up here. Then time for the next fight. It definitely like feels like an intermission Did story for before like a new there? area arise, but still, oh, so curious. And there's already a facial. We can't talk to her though. Saddle. What name? Come on in. After checking prison break on this uh, skiff haven. <sighs> Seriously? When is this war dance going to start? The sky splitter has been hovering there for ages. When can we board and see what's inside? It actually has been a while since we've been Is this how long my species live? Everything proceeds so slowly. The effectiveness of anticipation in my emotional center is at an all time high. <laughs> I need to drink some coolant. Okay. Relax. The Realm Keeping Commission will send boarding notices to all ticket holders. The Gazette said the Sky Splitter will fire a salute before the ceremony starts. I saw the schedule for the first day of the tournament. Can you believe the Ringmaster accepted four challenges? And he's just a kid. So, who are you betting on, Bardo? I'm betting on neither. I lost all my credits betting on Roboball games in Tykean. This time, I've decided <laughs> not to rely on probability games to accomplish my target of getting rich. I'm guessing they're having a bit of a habit on betting a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, all right. War dance. <sighs> There you are. I heard you and Mr. Don Hung went to meet the judges, and then a riot broke out in the Shackling prison. I was so worried about you. <sighs> Thank goodness you both made it out safe. There was a revolt in the Shackling prison. Fortunately, we were protected by the guards until the Cloud Knights arrived to rescue us. I was planning to take Miss March and Yun Lee to Stargazer Navalia to see the Sky Splitter up close, but we stumbled upon a group of suspicious Foxians carrying official identities. They were acting strange, so out of curiosity, we decided to follow them. It turns out they were actually Boris and disguised as Foxians. It seems they infiltrated Stargazer Navalia in order to prepare for Hule's escape, and we foiled their plans by pure chance. It actually was like the I wonder who provided them with those disguises, and how many more Borison have taken advantage of the war dance to infiltrate the ship. Oh, we quite a lot. Yeah, I heard them too, but I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint them. I've already reported to General Jing Yuan that I'll give up my role as the ringmaster. The security of the Lafu is more important to me than anything else. 
I need to fulfill my duties as a Cloud Knight Lieutenant before taking on the honor of being a Ringmaster. Hmm. Those tourists just want to see some good sword fights. Anyone can participate in this kind of tournament. Doesn't have to be me. Fair enough. The real challenge lies beyond the ring on the Sky Splitter. If we don't capture the fugitive soon, Hule will wreak havoc. Obviously, there's someone behind the scenes orchestrating this prison break, intending to spread chaos. If we fail to thwart their evil plan, what honor will be left for us to uphold? Well said. You may be tiny in stature, chime in. but your ambition matches that of the Yao Qing's warriors. Hey, th this has nothing to do with my height. Yes, I suggested to Yan Qing that we find a place to have a decent meal. A hunter must be well fed before the hunt. You still have a good appetite, even in the face of disaster. You truly are the Merlin's Claw. Please finish the food quickly so we can get to work, General Feishao. Well, that's not up to me. Dig in. I called you here so you could enjoy the food. Me? Uh, this isn't the time for a leisurely meal, and this is way too much for me. <laughs> this actually is quite a lot of time. Oh. You'd give me time to enjoy a meal, but not yourself? Like, I'm not sure what is it like the buns were, but like the dumplings. Comes in around the area, like. That means all like Yosa can be quite filling. It really can be quite filling. Especially once I've made myself before they were like. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since you encountered those Boris and spies, you've been so busy that you've hardly eaten anything. You can't defeat Hule on an empty stomach. Take your time. Enjoy the meal and calm yourself. Uh, Hule's whereabouts are still unknown, and they've even taken Mr. Zhao Cho hostage. The longer we wait, the more complicated the situation becomes. All right. Zhao Chou always said I'm the most impatient person among the Cloud Knights, and I can't argue with that. So, there's no reason for you to be more anxious than me. I've fought against Boris and Abominations for years, and I know their ferocity and cunning well. The Borsen were clearly well prepared for this prison break, and now they are staying in the shadows. They have no reason to rush out into the open. When facing cunning and ferocious prey, the hunter must be more patient, biding their time to seize the golden chance for a decisive blow. Once Hule loses his patience and reveals himself, that's when we'll strike. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Thank you for the follow and also welcome to the chat even though you are leaving and so take care <sighs> but when will that time come like i said it's only one meal away so you're expecting them to come out soon or i'm guessing after checking for something in the seat of divine foresight Okay. General Hua Yen, the Skyfaring Commission has finished its preparations. Do you have any other instructions? Representing the consensus between the Merlin's Claw and the Divine Foresight, I'll step in as the temporary commanding officer of the seat of Divine Foresight and oversee the Six Commission's affairs on the Law Fu. What is the situation at the Shackling Prison? Hule made a quick escape and even sealed the gates of the prison. As of now, the Cloud Knights have re-established contact with the staff inside. Hmm. The good news is the two nameless who were trapped in the Shackling prison are safe and sound. <sighs> um, I know I shouldn't use the word great given the current situation, but I'm relieved that he and Don Hung are safe. This is something would happen to us, come on. <laughs> We've lost contact with one of the messengers from the Xianzhou Yaoqing. The Borisin have likely taken him hostage. Don't worry, Yuko. 
Fei Shao is leading the wolf hunt operation, and you know how capable she is. I have no doubt about General Fei Shao's capabilities, General Huai Yan. I'm more concerned about the Wardens. According to the plan, the ceremony will begin in six hours. The Sky Splitter will be activated, and all visitors will board the ship to watch the contest. But now, with Hu Lei's whereabouts unknown, everything is filled with uncertainty. Mm. I mean, yeah, it should be just a. Uh, um and it's scheduled by because I'm guessing Fairy Show is um, intending to use it as bait because it will be like a good opportunity for them to like get into the group and maybe like disappear without notice. March is right, Grandpa. I heard the escape prisoner from the Shackling prison is beyond formidable. In case anything goes wrong. So, Yun Li, what do you think we should do? Well, hmm. I believe we should declare martial law and allocate manpower to search for the escape prisoners. And as for the war dance, it's better to announce an indefinite delay for now. Literally would be a stupid idea. <laughs> Declaring martial law, um... All of a sudden, with like most people not even like actually knowing what's going on quite at the moment, it would just cause a lot of panic, especially with like a lot of uh, outsiders currently being on the law of food because of the war dance. There will be even more panic as people would, would try to get back to their like home world, and yeah. It would definitely be dis uh, dis definitely be displeased with the war dance being cancelled. So yeah, stupid up. Uh, yeah, it, it it really would be stupid. Your plan sounds solid, but unfortunately, solid plans rarely get a chance to be implemented. I believe there are at least two parties who won't accept your approach. The first are the many travelers who have come all the way here for the war dance. If we declare martial law now, it's like declaring that the law foo isn't safe. How do you think the outsiders would react? They'd be terrified, and chaos might ensue. Yep, just as The second party is the staff of the Xianzhou Law Fu's six commissions. They've invested a lot of resources and manpower into organizing the war dance. Suddenly suspending it indefinitely would create numerous challenges for them. But of course, not everyone disagrees with your idea. Uh, really? The mastermind behind this incident would fully support your opinion, presumably. Mm-hmm. Hule's escape and your discovery of Boris and spies at Stargazer Navalia. Hmm. Even a child could guess that these events were orchestrated. The fugitive is just one piece in the game. The one controlling the pieces wants to spread chaos and suspicion among the people on the Law Fu. If we declare martial law and postpone the war dance, we'll fall into their trap and instill fear in people even before Hule actually does anything. Yep. So what do we do? It would just be blank. We'll search hands. for the prisoners while maintaining order on the law fool, acting as if nothing has happened. As if nothing has happened? Yen Ching said he'd assist the generals, and now he's nowhere to be found. <laughs> With the host ringmaster gone, how are we supposed to act like nothing has happened? We can just say that. That's why I called the two of you here. General Huayan asking you to be the ringmaster instead of Yen Ching? No, that's not the case. Hm. General Huayan, are you asking me to take Yen Ching's place as the ringmaster? You caught on quickly, Miss March. That's exactly what I mean. 
Hey, you would have expected it to be like more unily over uh, March, but okay. But Miss March is a guest invited by General Jing Yuan, Grandpa. How can an outsider represent the Lawfu in the ring? It will make the Sienjo Lawfu a laughing stock. Mm, not necessarily if she is like announced as like the, the student of um of like the one who was supposed to be the ringmaster, which is Yao Jing. Like, it would actually be more like a show of power if an outsider who just learned, um, yeah, sword fighting. And like, how well, I don't know how much time has passed between like, it, between, like this patch and, uh, and the last one, the last patch and series started her training. But in like whatever amount of time she did, and then even manages to win like all the fights, it would just like prove their power even more. Not just like in terms of actually being strong in fighting capability wise, but also in like being strong, actually being able to like share that knowledge and teach people. Dear child, the nameless of the Astral Express are renowned throughout the cosmos. It's an honor to have them participate in the ceremony. Plus, Miss March is a disciple of the little Cloud Knight Lieutenant. How can she be regarded as an outsider? You can't afford to have any problems during the war dance. I'm entrusting you not only with the honor of the ring, but also with the security of the Sky Splitter. Yu Kong, please explain to them the rest of the arrangements. We actually we go switching to Lingsha's POV. Interesting. Three to hours before the war dance convenes in the Shackling prison. Oh. Huh. I am sorry for our improper management, and I truly appreciate your assistance, General. There is no need to apologize. We Cloud Knights fight on the battlefield while you judges punish the criminals. We are two sides of the same Sienjo Law Fu. And it is my honor to serve the Ten Lords Commission. I've grasped the situation of the prison break. Now tell me more about the current state of the Shackling prison. Borison infiltrated the prison in disguise and released the prisoners, spreading chaos. Thank you for the follow, Hakuna Nanashi. Very appreciated. Among the judges on duty in the four divisions, Judge Shui Yi from the detention division was killed and is temporarily unavailable. So, I'm taking over her duties and commanding Arumaton Spectral Envoys and Spiritfarers to quickly restore order in the affected areas. <laughs> also, welcome to chat. And thank you, Stel. I and the two behind me will go deeper into the prison to investigate. But, General... The situation inside is still chaotic and perilous. Your presence would be... It's common for Cloud Knight Generals <laughs> to face danger directly. Hule has escaped, and the Yao Qing envoy is being held hostage by the Borison. His fate is unknown. This is a grave matter. Quite some hyperactive emotes have got going there. <laughs> Not only did the Merlin's Claw offer no reproach, she decided to go after Hule herself to prevent further calamity. I believe the Law Fu owes her something in return for her fervent determination. I bet. I bet you have. How did the infiltrators learn about the location where Hule was held? And how did they time their plan just before the Yao Qing messengers were ready to escort him? Finding the answer to these questions shouldn't be too difficult. What truly matters is if we can gather the clues that lead us to the mastermind behind all of this. I understand, but I'm afraid it won't be an easy task. For a long time, this hidden force has been pursuing their own goals and undermining the security of the Law Fu. It... Backing down now will only encourage them to further endanger the peace here. I thought just notice one thing is not working. Huh. My chat is not like, appearing on stream for whatever reason. What's broken now? 
Uh, is this a quick fix or not? I'm not sure if it is. Uh, yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, no. uh, that's not a quick fix. Eh, done with our chat on stream today. Yes, I am German. I also do uh, also uh, do stream in German as well, um, but I do that on YouTube, not on Twitch. <laughs> I'm kind of splitting splitting like language and platform, and also what types of games I play. The Ten Lords Commission will support your decision with everything we have, General. Don Hong. And Ling Sha, I'll need both of you to accompany me on this challenging journey. Well, it's part of my responsibilities as the Cauldron Master. So, where would you like to start, General? Let's start with those Borisin disguised as Foxians. My people have already prepared the evidence. Okay, what evidence? Oh, we actually like playing with Ling Sha. Do we actually know her skill kit though? I'm guessing I'm gonna get be, be able to see it, right? I hate this. Why is that gate not showing me? Hmm. Does that have for game two something about Ling Sha? So. Am I gonna be able to see her skills though? Uh, why outside of the game? Mm. She's not even showing up here. Thank you for nothing, game. Literally, thank you for nothing. <laughs> I guess I have to check once we actually like, get into a fight with her. Which sucks because it would be good to know before we go into a fight so I can know what synergies there is, but I... According to Lieutenant Yenching's report, he stumbled upon a few suspicious Foxians at Stargazer Navalia. After following them, he discovered that they were actually Borison in disguise. This is one of the bodies. <sighs> Looking at him now, it's hard to imagine how he transformed into a Foxian. My alchemist detected some... complex ingredients in his remains, which might explain how these Borison were able to disguise themselves as Foxians. Ingredients and so Simply okay. put, Foxians and Borison share a common ancestry. Although they look completely different now, there isn't much genetic difference between them. This medicine allows Borison to temporarily change their shape into that of Foxians. So, in other words, if they stop taking the medicine, their true form will soon be revealed? What? Who, me? I could never imagine myself being a fox and nah, never. Not sure how you're getting that idea, nah. <laughs> Indeed. This means that these Borison have a steady supply of the medicine within the Lafu. <sighs> the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Looks like the Alchemy Commission is involved once again. Hmm. When I was sorting through the prescriptions they used, I came across one called Semblance Reversion Essence. It's designed to help those disciples suppress signs of their Mara-struck forms and maintain their normal appearance. When I compared it to the medicine found in the Borison's body... They're one and the same, aren't they? The medicinal properties and ingredients may differ, but the principle remains the same. Since ancient times, the Borison have always sought to have more powerful bodies, regarding the Foxians as weaklings. Yet, 
in order to save their warhead, they were willing to disguise themselves as Foxians. <laughs> their determination is quite remarkable. That kind of looks off poster together, but okay. <laughs> If these infiltrators rely on the medicine to maintain their disguise, then following this lead in our investigation seems prudent. Please follow me. Here we are. According to the judge, this area is not yet under control. So we should proceed cautiously. I've captured the nature of the medicine in my sensor. By following the medicinal fumes, we should be able to retrace the steps of the disguised Borison. She just wanna go and switch it out for Peja. Is she? The creature in the burn. Mm. <laughs> a prison guard has collapsed on the ground, her body twisted unnaturally. Examine the remains of the warden. Incredible strength. The attacker shattered this warden's bones with a single blow. Such brute strength is not something an ordinary Borison possesses. This is likely the work of Hulai. If I may be so bold to ask, is this Borison truly that formidable? I have lived a bit longer and engaged in a few more battles than you, Miss Lingshaw. To the Alliance, Yep, Boris have always been the most formidable adversaries. And Hulei is a monster feared even among his own kind. With his strength, Hulei united numerous Boris and packs, forming a grand army of abominations of abundance. They constantly pushed the Alliance's armies into perilous positions. Over seven centuries ago, I followed my mentor on a campaign against the Abominations. And I personally witnessed the devastation on the battlefield after Hule appeared. All right, and this is also where, like, where that comes from that, like, you shouldn't say genius name near Hule. <laughs> <laughs> Even Yay. with medicinal pellets that Thank suppress the, the fear movie. caused by his lupitoxin, countless cloud knights succumbed to panic in the face of his murderous aura. They couldn't even raise a hand in resistance. If the former sword champion hadn't immobilized Thule with her frost blade, the outcome of that fateful battle would have been very different. By the end of the battle, only a few of us remained. The crimson moon cast the sheen of blood on all. Everything I saw was painted dark red. Bad Haku, don't threaten people to follow me. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it, but don't threaten them. <laughs> and welcome to chat, Dolphy. Nice to see you. If that's the case, why wasn't the beast executed instead of being imprisoned? <sighs> On the Sienjo Jumi, the judges cast those unforgivable and nearly immortal abominations of abundance into the eternal flames of the stars, reducing them to ashes. Their so called immortality is just a facade. I mean, nothing can truly defy death, can it? I just don't understand why the Lafu kept this tumor for so long, leading to the terrible situation we're facing now. Mm, but yeah, I guess I understand. The people of the Lafu are known for their kindness. Even when faced with the malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, they couldn't bring themselves to cut it out. Instead, they exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Sienjo Jumi. Hmm. Understand if you hold grudges against me, Miss Lingshaw. Right, it was like I take the blame right. for the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. As for why Hule was only in prison, 
I can shed some light on that too. Yeah, if I remember, yeah. She was like excited alongside her mentor to to decentral swimming. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? I'm just a healer. I'm not familiar with the past. I'd appreciate it if you could enlighten me, General. All right. Let me tell you more about it as we go. <laughs> Get a room, you two, if you're up to shenanigans. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's actually see what Lingshaw is capable of. No dirty tricks, alright. No, that's better. Bangs and claws got. <sighs> What's her skill set? Fire damage, deals more fire damage to all enemies at the same time. Storage people. Ooh. Queen's action appearances. What's for you? Increase break damage taken by all of them. Just fight on channels. Using skill summons for you and taking it on another day. So, additionally, both toughness. Okay. Oops. Reducing taking new summons for you and the start of the next part increases. So. so, she's like boosting break damage and it's like literally um a topaz with healing capabilities as it looks like the fearless knows not fear time to cleanse the fill i hit the mark it's on me No dirty trick. Oh. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend. Crush them. I venture forth to hunt. Forever. Triumphant! Okay, is this this? Check. Check. Okay, it's actually highlighting Victory which is storm. Is yes. You're falling apart on your own. Never hesitate! Oh May the foul stench dissipate quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was Oh no, it only has eighty percent chance for it to follow attack. And she's at a wave. Okay, you got much more rubber this achievement. What the hell is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Just wondering about with keeping her uh, pet on the field, I guess. Did this Cloud Knight also take the medicine? Make sure to open the Cloud Knight's armor stretches out her hands to search for a moment. No. This is a Borison in disguise. A guard killed him before he could return to his original form. All these Borisin are dressed in official attire. Besides the Cloud Knight, there were also two Borisin disguised as members of the Skyfaring Commission and the Artisanship Commission. And yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm playing it since day one. <laughs> yes. Whoever is providing them with official identities must hold the position of power. Let's search elsewhere. Also, pretty much only have like, I think like, uh, missed like in most like five days of search. And I have almost like played it daily. Mm, I can just ignore these. Yeah. 
Your prisoners on the ground, the joy of regaining freedom and sudden shock. Those two expressions are frozen on his pale face at the moment of death. Someone <laughs> bit open his arteries and drained almost all of his blood while he was still alive. <sighs> Such a cruel and ruthless act. That's what I did in Genshin for a while until I've like pretty much stopped playing it. I may go we'll go back go back into it once there's like a bit more story out and just like really just gonna play Genshin for story and nothing more. I've really lost that much interest in it. <laughs> the only thing that interests me by now is just like the story and it's also just like mainly due to the reason because I wanna know how it fits into like this whole universe of like the, the Honkai games. Despite being a long-lived species, Borsen are actually more like predatory beasts that must feed on raw blood and flesh. I've heard that Hule was deprived of food and water in the Shaqen prison. Kengu will burn some wolves. It's hard to imagine how he managed to suppress his hunger for over seven centuries. Will the hostage from the Yaoqing be able to avoid being his meal? Such is the terrible nature of the abominations of abundance. We subjected him to the forest of swords to drain his life force. But in the end, his punishment turned into a test of our patience. We haven't done Letland yet as well. I also haven't like done the 4.6 patch and what the story part that was in there. I also will like wait until I will actually get into Netland for like a few more patches. I kind of like just want to wait until like most of like the Netland main story is done. So I can just like binge it. <laughs> and then just let and then just like leave it laying for like another couple of months. Once I play through all of that again. Just like you said, Miss Lingshaw. Casting a creature that can't be killed into a star would be a way to permanently get rid of it. But unfortunately... The Foxians didn't agree to that. Exactly. The atrocities committed by Hule went beyond mere massacres. Throughout numerous wars, we made every effort to eradicate the Borison. But Hule... With his mysterious sorcery turned countless Foxians into his pawns, and so the Borison kept returning. The Foxians curse his name day and night, and they even use it to scare children into staying quiet. How could they grant a swift death to such a great sinner? You two really like to mess with each other, huh? <laughs> I wonder if you know why. Hule wasn't taken into custody by the Foxian majority Sienjo Yaoqing, but instead imprisoned in the Sienjo Luofu, Miss Lingcha. As you mentioned, your mentor was an exceptional warrior and was the one who defeated Hule, an extraordinary achievement. Therefore, the Marshal placed this feral beast under the jurisdiction of the Sienjo Luofu as an honor, I assume. And very good friends mess with each other a lot, so yeah. It seems you have a major misunderstanding about this arrangement, Miss Lingsha. Allow me to explain it to you. You're not good friends if you're not messing with each other. <laughs> it's almost part of being good friends. Just like exploring it. Ah, the wolf shaped mech disintegrated into a pile of metal. Yen Ching told me that an IPC ship was attacked by Borison. Is this what they were transporting on the ship? 
Mm. Yes. The Artisanship Commission and Alchemy Commission conducted a joint examination and found that parts of this machine are made from specially refined Borisin bio tissue. I heard the Intelligentsia Guild has been researching the biological properties of long life species, hoping to make medical or combat related discoveries. However, they haven't dared to cross any lines due to their so called relationship with the Alliance. Perhaps to those scholars, Borison are no different from lab animals. <sighs> Maybe the Borison attacked that ship to retaliate against the Intelligentsia Guild for experimenting on them? It was it was it the Genius Society or the Intelligentsia Guild? One of these two is like researching whatever the hell they please no matter the consequences or maybe it's even both of them i could actually imagine it being both <laughs> no if it were only about revenge they could just wreck the ship and destroy all the cargo instead of allowing it to end up in the shackling prison it was a deliberate display to showcase the dangerous nature of the cargo in broad daylight this way, the cargo would end up in the shackling prison, serving as a tool for the prison break. This skill in exploiting the blind spots of others' mindsets is so atypical of them. Hmm. I'm afraid the IPC and the Intelligentsia Guild unknowingly became their accomplices. Seven things will be hiding in a pile of metal on the ground, ready to move. Of course, it's going to be to, to attack us. Watch out! This thing is still alive! Giant, even after suffering such severe attacks? Their imitation of long life species has crossed the line. May the foul spend time to cleanse the filth. Oh. Sure, I'll play along. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the dice have been buzzed. Or maybe I'll take it off! I venture forth to hunt forever. Triumphant! Victory is inevitable! There's well. always a weakness. Oh, okay. It's not that that easily, but okay. Uh, why should I come in first? Lend me your strength! Fangs and claws got dull. The fearless knows not fear. Watch your head. Oh. Allow me to purge the root of the problem. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the truth. Everything in this world is bleeding. That <laughs> bunny's like cute. <laughs> if it can still move, it means it wasn't damaged enough. Let's make sure it never moves again. Already at it. Triumphant! Victory is inevitable! Yep, well, Adventure's whole character is literally being a little like. You a haven't answered gambler, my question really. about why <laughs> Hulei was imprisoned he in the law instead of the Yao Qing general. You've been reserved in your response. Could it be that such an arrangement wasn't an honor? Oh, thank you. Well, take care though, and get your like better recharge. Hope I maybe see you there again. <laughs> the reason why the marshal didn't leave Huli on the Yao Ching lies in the very mech in front of us. Are you suggesting that there are people trying to understand who lay secrets and use them for their own purposes? <laughs> Just like with this mech? <sighs> well, I understand. I've heard that the Foxians on the Yao Qing share a bloodline with the Borison. And just like the Borison, some of the Foxians there experience an uncontrollable insanity called Moon Rage. Who has said that Haku was in, in charge in the first place? Hehehehe <laughs>
The Marshal believed that this would be inhumane and no different from what the Borison did, so... Exactly. While Borison see Moon Rage as a blessing that unlocks their true potential, Foxians see it as an inevitable curse within their bloodline. Countless healers of the Yao Ching have attempted to unravel this mystery. Enjoy me. But to no avail. Why can Borison control the power of Moon Rage? Can we Foxians break free from this curse? These questions were asked frequently. Each questioner had good intentions. <laughs> but the road to catastrophe <laughs> is paved with good intentions. To the Foxians of the Yao Ching, Hule was not only the warhead of the Borison, but also a monster that could be the subject of much research. Hule thus became a poison that corrupted people's minds without their knowing. That's why the Marshal decided to imprison Hule and the La Fu. It wasn't an honor, but rather a warning. Because such selfish pursuits in the name of good intentions once led to a tragedy on the La Fu that served as a warning to future generations. Quite enough a dangerous warning to keep around, this edition though. of Imbibitor Lune. <laughs> By imprisoning Hule and the Sienjo La Fu, the Marshal both suppressed the dangerous intentions of the Yao Ching Foxians and warned the Sienjo La Fu to refrain from repeating its mistake. That was a necessary trade-off. The Sienjo Alliance is not solely about the Sienjo natives. Only when all three races, Foxian, Vidyadora, and Sienjo natives, form an alliance, will there be a promising future for all. Thank you for enlightening me. Was it for the same reason that you traded off my mentor to the Sienjo Zhu Ming, only to stand idle and allow the resurgence of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? Well, saying that she's not really treading on the past, she's ki kind of really much pressing him on that. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. She's definitely holding a crutch. Even though she's trying to play it off, she is not able to. <laughs> you said that I couldn't bear to cut out the malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, but instead exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Sienjo Ju Ming. But did your mentor tell you her good intentions led her to perform certain healing arts on Dun Hung? who had just finished his hatching rebirth <laughs> so that he would regain the memories of his past life. What, what did, you did you just say? say? She believed that restoring the High Elder's knowledge of his past life would allow the Vidyadara to resume their duty as the guardians of the Ambrosial Arbor. Hmm, so actually connected to the the strife within their clan and bringing everything back on the right path. But just as I mentioned earlier, the road to catastrophe is always paved with good intentions. Since then, the Six Charioteers decided that the Alchemy Commission would no longer have a Cauldron Master. Until your arrival now. Uh, if, if that's the case, I should thank you for protecting my mentor by exiling her, General. Quite the contrary. I should be the one thanking you. Thanking me? All I ever want is to have a clear conscience. However, can long life species truly achieve that goal in their long drawn lives? For example, you were implicated along with your mentor and forced to leave your homeland without knowing the truth. Really is kind of actually quite a predicament as like a long lived species you have like a lot more chances than like a normal human to do things that you might regret later down the line. Just due to the nature of like living for that much longer. And now, with the complicated situation in the Alchemy Commission, the Alliance has spared me a lot of trouble by sending you to handle this challenging task. Shouldn't I be thanking you instead? 
Your eloquence is indeed impressive, the Divine Foresight. He won't even leave me any excuses to hold a grudge against you. <laughs> but, let me make it clear. The Alliance sent me here to handle the business impartially, not to choose sides. It doesn't matter which side you choose, Miss Lingshaw. At the end of the day, both you and I stand on the side of the Alliance, don't we? Let's keep going. I wonder if they actually will find down here because they're throwing it. They're throwing it out quite a lot, so there might something be actually here. I mean, it's possible like Cody was in prison, but. Yeah. I also find it interesting how apparently, like, his aura or like his. Uh, what was it called? Lupit Lupitoxin? It was like still emanating from his, like, prison cell. <laughs> A mess of parties, a fierce battle must have been fought here. Examine the Mara struck remains. These Mara struck soldiers don't appear to be escaped prisoners. How can you tell? These soldiers are fully armed. Obviously, they didn't hastily join the battle. The messenger named Morza did say that there were two groups of attackers. The other attackers. Aside from the Borison, could hide their tracks. I believe he was referring to these people. Hide their tracks? Exactly. I've engaged with these attackers before, and they used Cloud Him magic to hide their presence. Without careful observation, no one can detect them. You once warned me to be cautious of the Vidyadra Elder's influence within the Alchemy Commission. Could it be? What's on your mind, Miss Lingshaw? Well, it seems that someone provided the attackers with a map of the Shackling Prison. And considering the Vidyadra's involvement in the prison's construction, it raises suspicion about their role in this. Hmm. She has a point. Additionally, the fact that the Borison need medicine to disguise themselves would suggest that there are still moles within the Alchemy Commission assisting them covertly. Moreover, forging official identities for the undercover Borison would require someone with significant authority. And the presence of assassins capable of using Cloud Him magic deepens my suspicion about the preceptors. But why would the Vidyadra collude with the Borzin and Aiden who lays escape? They aim to spread chaos. They believe that only in chaos can they regain their former power and influence. Hmm. Since this Stupid. edition of Imbiber de Lune, the once proud dragon race has been powerless, watching their influence wane. Being a native of the Lo Fu, Miss Ling Sha. I believe you understand the implications. However, I don't think the preceptors are the true mastermind. If I'm not mistaken, the one behind all this treachery is the Lord Ravager who exploited the weaknesses within the Law Fu and instigated the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, ultimately leading to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Fentilia. Well. Like the Lord Ravagers are all about spreading destruction and chaos. So, yeah, no surprise there. Please remember, General, that everything I've mentioned is mere speculation. We need concrete evidence for a public trial. If you want to interrogate someone within the Vidyadra's ranks, you'll need irrefutable proof. So, what's your plan, Miss Lingshaw? I'll send an invitation to the preceptors. An invitation? The preceptors have been inviting me for a personal meeting since my arrival on the Lofu. Now, I'll send them the remains of these Mara struck soldiers and the route map I found in the prisoner's possession. Then, I'll ask them to meet me at Scale Gorge Waterscape. 
I'd like to hear their explanations. Good idea. If I were to take action, it might alert the true mastermind. I trust you to handle this matter, Miss Lingshaw. The internal affairs of the Vidyadara should remain under their jurisdiction. And don't worry if things don't go smoothly. Once the wolf hunt operation is over, the hidden truths will come to light. Again, he's just like, taking you along, taking your back seat, and letting others do the work. <laughs> and it always fucking works out for him. At least he knows how to how to position the pawns he has on the board. Speaking of the wolf hunt operation, I'm truly worried about the Yaoqing messenger who was taken hostage. Hule was starving in the shackling prison for centuries. I don't know if the messenger can survive in that wolf's clutches. May Rainbow's blessing keep him safe. I think I already struck a deal with Hulu, um, through which he is able to be staying alive. Oh, we actually switching to his part, uh, POE. Two hours before the war ends, coming to exalting sanctum. As I said, I'm a healer. But my art of healing requires the culinary arts to be truly effective. The magic of my cauldron is its ability to make all kinds of medicines into dishes that patients can eat. When simmered and cooked together, any kind of medicinal herb or ingredient becomes a delightful delicacy. Delicacy. But isn't that just one flavor overpowering the others? Well, you have a point. Let me ask you this. If there's a fussy child who refuses to eat green peppers, what's the best way to make him eat them? Stuff the kid's like mouth else. with the green peppers and cook him alive in a pot. <laughs> you have quite the sense of humor. I've heard that you, Borison, have lost many of your taste buds during the self-modification process. So you can't experience complex flavors. Only the saltiness of blood and flesh truly awakens your appetite. Okay. It's a shame I don't have any green peppers right now. Otherwise, I'd happily stuff them into your mouth and cook you alive in a pot. I'm just kidding. The answer is quite simple. Chop up the peppers and mix them with minced meat to make meatballs. This way, the flavor of the meat overpowers the taste of the peppers. And even a fussy child can enjoy them. Got it. Can I just boil your tongue in this hot pot? I know you're trying to buy time until someone comes to your rescue. <laughs> you like Georgia. <laughs> You said that Jin Liu recently returned to the La Fu, right? Well, she did come back. <sighs> but, unfortunately, I also found out that she committed serious crimes and was escorted to another Sienjo ship. Oh, was she extreme? Do you really think you can delay our departure? By provoking Lord Hule's desire for revenge with your clever little tongue. You see Borison as savages who know nothing about the Sienjo. But in fact, we know all about your tracking tricks. Like the jade abacus you're carrying, and the side cranes in the sky. <laughs> The more hope you hold in your heart, the greater your pain will be when death comes. I wonder if you can maintain your composure when I tear your throat open. Hmm. This composure is only a temporary effect of the medicine. And it will wear off soon, right? Lord Hule. Oh. You pathetic Foxians. For thousands of years, we were the ones who allowed you to live and who granted you civilization. But in the end, you chose to betray us for the freedom promised by the Xianzhou people. 
I mean, in the other I also would have betrayed the Borosan, so... Yeah. <laughs> but it's all right. As long as you catch the scent of your masters, you obediently return to us. No matter how far you run away. Hmm. Ah, run away, you said. Well, I'm not the one who's trying to run away right now. The Borisans' era has long passed. Did they ever tell you these harsh facts before giving you hope for returning home, Lord Hule? Now they're being crushed by the Merlin's claw of the Yao Qing, by a Foxian. They're hiding in remote corners of the cosmos, trembling with fear like a wounded beast on its last legs, reaching out desperately for any fake hope of salvation, which in this case is you. Hmm. The Merlin's claw of the Yao Qing, a Foxian? <laughs> Very interesting. Tell me, Mock Talk. Is he speaking the truth? He isn't lying. That lonely beast was a war slave who ran away from our pack. Cannon fodder, a thief. She stole our power and used her knowledge about us to fight us using every dirty trick in the book. I mean, you deserve and that. She bested you, Mock Talk. Fairness is but a pathetic excuse for the dead and defeated. Hmm. Since our great pack has fallen apart, who told you that I was alive? And who sent you here? In our darkest hours, he was a prophet of the Master of Immortality, named Mangus, who showed us the way. Her guidance brought us hope. This prophet, Mongus, what does she want? The Good prophet question. made this proclamation. The Borison have been divided for too long, and only your return can unite all the packs, restoring us to our former glory. That's when we learned that you were still alive. It must have been a manifestation of the Master of Immortality! I was interesting how they're like actually like believing every word that like so-called prophet is telling them. And they're even like calling them a prophet and everything. So they should already like speak volumes about the expectations of that person. And the prophet told us that the Foxy in general of the Yao Qing would take you to her ship during the Lafu's war dance, and that it would be our best chance to infiltrate and free you from your prison. And just as she said, we did it. That so-called prophet lied to all of you. She just sent you here to die. Mm -hmm. Prophecy has come true. Our warhead is right here with it us. Used, uh, not Once together. the news about the prison break spreads, the Cloud Knights will close all the ports. You may think you've escaped the prison, but you're just trapped in another cage known as the Law Fu. Uh, let me kill this unruly, lowly beast, Lord Hule. I assure you that our star skiffs will soon arrive. Right now, everyone in the Lafu is distracted by the stupid war dance. So this will be the perfect chance to escape. Once you've returned to your territory, the revenge against the Sienjo ships will be within reach. Perfect chance to return to my weak and shattered pack at the mercy of a ridiculous false prophet and become a mere puppet in her clutches. <laughs> Her plan is full of flaws. 
The only paths she has prepared for you are escape and death. Yeah, I kind of figured it. Huli wouldn't be as stupid as the <laughs> Listen up. A wolf never allows itself to become prey. From now on, you'll follow my orders. <laughs> Since you are so confident that the Cloud Knights will close the ports, Jiao Cho, oh, I'm now you giving you a wait. chance to go and see it for yourself. Go to the ports. Come back. And tell me what you saw. Thank you very much. Welcome, readers. <laughs> Show me while. Yeah, just exploring more of the Star Wars story. <laughs> hey there, K. K. Callahan, I'm guessing. Is how it's pronounced? <laughs> Wait. What did you just say? But my lord! Ha! Would an Sweet. alpha wolf ever listen to a cob mock talk? No, I've never heard anything like that. I... I wasn't trying to defy your will. I will always unquestioningly follow your orders. Just a little pre-hunt entertainment. Don't you want to run away? <laughs> you will come back. Because Foxians like you always obediently return to their masters. No matter how far they run away. We shouldn't be so confident about it. I don't think Foxians actually still consider them as masters. Times have changed, too late. Wait, is it actually like letting Georgia go? Okay, why not? I'm gonna be switching up my party then if you're like running around with Georgia. Uh, where is. Uh, I'm just gonna. As we reunite in this venture, let's hope the fates grant us both what we Does seek. My run? There. All or nothing. <laughs> Time will tell. And for here, let's just take her. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe he actually let me go. What game is he playing? I actually worry about that too. Perhaps I can try to warn the Cloud Knights. No. Perhaps I can just escape. I really am wondering. A fox in with a cold expression gazes at Georgia. There's a sharp pressure to the gaze. Carrying us with a warning to the healer that says, If you cover a little forward you bear, might lead to severe consequences we will come to regret. And then. <laughs> Welcome back, Del Dolby. Hope uh, you enjoyed your snack. Just as I suspected, he's testing me. The Cloud Knights must have been aware of the situation inside the Shackling Prison for some time. Will General Fei Xiao personally lead a squad to capture Hulei? For now, I'll do as he asked. Hmm. Okay, well, it's like search for peons in the new studio outside. Okay, full of rules just in the head towards the dog area. Actually, it's the dog area again. Uh, ah, up there. Okay. That's like, uh, let's just talk to the people, I guess. Not sure if that will do anything, though. The task of Pilot is just an ordinary but hardworking individual who ferries people from place to place every day. Understand if your fortress, uh, fortress ask him for aid, you will reap severe repercussions regardless if the outcome is a success or failure. Remember, be mindful of your words and actions. <laughs> nice. 
Would you like to board my star skiff? I'm guessing the dude behind him is like um, a bros in disguise. I'm curious that the fox and passengers near the uh, star skiff pilots are looking at you up and down. Yeah, I think my. Uh, yeah. Well, my little star skiff can't accommodate that many. But I have a larger one that will arrive in less than 15 minutes if you need it. So, where would you like to go? Hmm. We need to hurry wherever we're going. The war dance is about to start, and the Skyfaring Commission is prioritizing star skiffs heading to the Sky Splitter. Oh, is it like actually saying with red it's like a bad option? <laughs> of course, this would be a bad option to ask if we can keep this quiet. Uh... Close the ports? Why would they do that? Okay, they didn't. Are we supposed to go, like, go for the other options? Would you like to board my stuff? I want to see it, what just the other one says. Well, my little stars, we need to hurry wherever we're... What? Are you joking? How can I take you beyond the Jade Gate in this tiny star skiff? I'm guessing if I take the red option, I'm triggering a fight, am I not? I just want to see what it does. I'm curious. Would you like to board? <laughs> well, my we need to hurry wherever we're. Keep what quiet? <laughs> Come on, spill it if you have something to say. Hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna keep following through. You want to leave alone now? Sure. The starting fare is six trails. Where do you want to go? Uh, uh, such by a boris and now you have no money on you. Hey, you can't take my star skiff for free. Maybe you should withdraw some money first. I'll be ready whenever you are. Okay, it actually doesn't do anything. Okay. Now I wonder if this is good or bad. <laughs> I guess I will just see. I'm committed now to go for the right options. The Ryan Keeping Commission orally is not accustomed to handling emergencies like this one. Understand if you follow the XM for aid, you will reap severe repercussions because of the comes success or fail. The game is warning me about it, but I kind of just want to like commit to it and see what like the bad outcome is <laughs> i'm sorry but the realm keeping commission chancery is currently closed all the officers and officials have been reassigned to assist in the war dance you guys are someone staring at you from not far away if i can help you <laughs> i'm just gonna go for uh, for it all uh... <laughs> hi do you need my help, messenger from the Sienjo Yaoqing? Borisin are hiding in the Exalting Sanctum. You must deliver this news to the Cloud Knights. Uh, Borisin? Here? Are you serious? These Borisin are disguised as Foxians. Please warn the Cloud Knights immediately. Will you please wait here for a while? I'll find a soldier. I mean, I guess we can sow a little chaos with Charger, even if it's not um, advantageous to us, but hey. Ground soldiers on duty here is alone and without reinforcements. Understand if you fortress and ask her for aid, you will reap severe repercussions regardless if the outcome is success or failure. Hey there. Yeah, I, already know that. I noticed you'd been looking at me for quite a while. Do you need my help? You can sense I was staring at you from not far away. Yeah, we can see him. Could you please provide more details? Wait, I recognize you. 
You're the lost Yaoqing messenger. How are you here? I was brought here by the Borison. Please make sure to report this news. All right. I'll call for reinforcements. Okay. We committed. <laughs> Let's see how this will, like, what the repercussions for this will be. I'm guessing just like a half a fight, maybe? I mean, the decision shouldn't like actually like change the outcome of the story, so let's just see. Stop asking. I'm off duty now. Go bother someone else. <laughs> You're not one of us. But I smell a familiar scent on you. The warhead sent me here to check on the situation. Not yet. There's no way for this tiny ship to escape from the Sienjo. Only the starships at Stargazer Navalia can break through the Jade Gate. Mokdok said there would be insiders to pick us up, but I haven't heard anything yet. Okay. The ports haven't been closed? What is going on? Well, that's what we said. We have to do Stalling it, so won't help. Chaos. It's time to confront Hule and see what tricks he's up to. <laughs> I don't think this is to expect just like actually that anything like it means of actually making it able for him to escape but we'll see I guess you're back Jiao Cho come and take a good look who are these people people here are this cloud knight says there's official business that requires my cooperation What are you trying to do, Moktok? They have nothing to do with this. Nothing to do? I told you to go to the port and check out the situation. But I never gave you permission to talk with others. Remember, these people died because of you. A sickening crack of bones I could through the small courtyard. There was no screams, not even the sound of a struck. Okay, I did not expect this. <laughs> you want to prove to me that you hold everyone's lives in your hands, right, Hule? <laughs> oh, exactly as you said. So, have the Cloud Knights closed the ports? I mean, of course I wouldn't show it, but yeah, okay. I didn't expect him to actually put the lies of three NPCs on your conscience, but okay. Fair enough, game. <laughs> no. Hmm. They don't want to publicize my escape. I understand. It's no surprise. For fear is more deadly than claws and fangs. Especially during a festive time like the war dance. What lurks here is not a group of fugitives, but rather a pack of wolves amidst the flock. My cubs are hungry, ready to feast on flesh and blood, reveling in your fear. Your calm facade will soon crumble. I can tear through it and expose your pathetic bones any time. There's no escape from me. Jiao Cho. Of course, you can try your luck and believe that your wits will save you. But remember, you're not the only hostage in this city. If you try anything funny, innocent people will die because of you. I mean, yeah, we already now, experienced that. <laughs> let's talk about the Foxy in general you serve. Mokdok says she's here for me. 
which means she'll be hunting me herself. Before the hunt begins, I need to know my opponent. You can refuse and play tough, or you can cooperate and save us both some time, healer. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with a bit of deception, I guess. The Talman stretches out a finger and touches a shoulder blade with a movement so fast it's not visible. It's as if a dagger has cut away a piece of flesh and the pain of pieces down the bone. Good for this time. Good. At least you didn't try to draw attention with a scream. That way no one will die in vain. Fine. I'll tell you what you want to know about her. But I expect something in return. <laughs> what makes you think you're still in a position to negotiate with me? You can torture me until I talk. Or... Let's save us both some time. Warhead. Here's the question that's been bothering me. How have you managed to survive and endure centuries of torture? Borison aren't supposed to live that long. Or possess such regenerative abilities. Everyone I know about it. <sighs> so, is that why the Shen Zhao Yao Qing wanted to take me away? <laughs> oh, to some, I'm a hostage, but to others, I hold the secrets they desire. Oh, I still remember. In the early years of my captivity, the Foxians came and went. They extracted my blood and marrow, trying to unravel the mystery of Moon Rage. They wanted to conquer their fear of the Borison and free themselves from their bloodline. Unfortunately, they failed to uncover the secret. So, they resorted to the most brutal punishments they could imagine. Hmm. Some seek power to destroy their enemies, while others seek power to become their enemies. Which one are you, Jiao Cho? I mean, it's probably just due to you not having played a game for a bit. <laughs> I see. You're the most pitiful of them all, healer of the Yao Qing. You seek power to share it with others and do good. Well, then let me tell you the answer you seek. In our ancient legends, Duran, the ancestor of the Borison, was dissatisfied with his limited lifespan and power. He yearned to dominate the skies and become the master of all the stars. To achieve his goal, he sacrificed the lives of countless Borison and Foxians, pouring them into the spring bestowed by the Master of Immortality. Through a form of genetic sorcery, the water gave birth to a miracle. The lunar embryo. Okay. Duran ascended the birthing bed and obtained what he desired. A heart in the shape of a deep red full moon. He cut open his chest and replaced his original heart with this crimson moon. Nope. Okay, now bringing the in the theme of a crimson moon of all times after like Genshin just recently dropped like Alekino with all of the crimson moon stuff. 
curious. <laughs> I wonder if it's just like misleading or if there's actually like a connection there. Laugh all you want, but only I know the truth behind every word. Mm. This moon heart beats within the body of every generation of the Borisim Warhead. In the ritual that decides the new warhead, the successor cuts open the previous warhead's chest and consumes the divine heart, thus possessing it as their own. Oops. Looks like. Devouring is the true essence of life, hey there, allowing to us to endure and thrive. It gathers the life essence of all the prey we consume, making us stronger and stronger. I thought all hope was lost after seven centuries of torment. But now, this heart is beating once again. <laughs> all right. Now it's your turn to tell me everything about the Merlin's Claw. Jiao mm. Chao, I found you. Finally, Moser. Took your time. Took your sweet time. Two doors before the Warden's Queen, stuck is on Amalia. I know I'm in no position to question your orders, but if I understand correctly, you already have intelligence about the Borison? That's right. My people are busy collecting clues now. What's the situation, Mwadza? General, before we completely lost contact with Zhao Cho, I picked up a signal from his Jade Abacus. It won't take long before we locate their whereabouts. Okay, this is a little before Mwadza finds out where Zhao Cho is. Okay. If that's the case, shouldn't we immediately go there and join forces to eliminate the Borison? Why are we returning to Stargazer Navalia? Looks like your general has only taught you swordplay, not the art of the hunt. There's an old saying among the Borison. In the forest, the hunter may easily become the hunted. While we may call ourselves the hunters now, chasing them blindly will only make us become the prey. Mm-hmm. Are you joking, General? He's just a wolf who's been in prison for seven centuries. Even with his accomplices, they're no match for us numerous Lawfu Cloud Knights. How could he consider us I wouldn't be so sure prey? about it. Do not underestimate the enemy. Hule is not an ordinary Borison that can be easily killed. The advantage in numbers means nothing when we face that monster. A vicious beast who hasn't tasted blood and flesh in seven centuries is now lurking on the streets of the Lafu right before the war dance. This is what makes the situation treacherous and unpredictable. To him, the lives of ordinary people are just meat, ready to be devoured at any moment. I mean, it just could. Exactly. That is why we must succeed in our first strike or the situation will spiral out of control. You've heard of this military tactic, right? When you surround your enemy, leave one side open for them to escape. A skilled hunter must be well prepared, waiting for the prey at the most advantageous position. He's actually a lot smarter than all of us, like, subordinates, I might just call them. Because they're like, just, just literally, not even questioning their so-called prophet. What would we do if we were the escapees from the Shackling prison? While we can disguise ourselves and blend in with the crowd, we don't plan on staying here for long. In this case, what do we need most now? I mean, understandable. I also wouldn't trust a so-called prophet who is in the eyes of the Borisins 
just promising me everything I want, so to say. <laughs> there always, there always is a catch with that. But <laughs> I mean, that's not really exploiting something. This is, this is, it is quite clear that the proper, uh, the prophet is up to something themselves, and it's clear that Huli is expecting that, and it's clear that the rest of the Borisans do not expect it. <laughs> a star skiff to get us out of the Lafu. The Borison we discovered at Stargazer Navalia were actually preparing a vessel for their escape. We predict their next move, and we take them down. Let's start from where you found those Borison and corner our prey. Hey, I can actually play with the world the party I actually picked out. I guess, kind of. to go down. This is where we I don't know it yet. last time. And looks the same as usual. And yeah, I would appreciate no direct spoilers. But yeah. Because I blocked all the relevant news to make it seem as if nothing had happened. Losing contact with their accomplices preparing the star skiff will surely put them on guard. However, the more well prepared a plan is, the longer it takes to adjust when it's disrupted. If any Borson wants to stick to the original plan despite the risks, they'll surely come back to Stargazer Novalia to check the situation. Hmm. Are you suggesting that there are Borison here at Stargazer Novalia right now? I was actually am expecting the Cloud Knight guy just to be a Borison. Otherwise, they wouldn't have highlighted Feyshaw's um, text that much, and Feyshaw wouldn't have like um, pronounced it like that directly. This is an automated area, so don't you think that there are a bit too many people here today? First, look at those two Skyfaring Commission staff members. They've been observing us in secret since we arrived here. See? <laughs> then there's a Cloud Knight soldier over there. Perhaps he's here for patrol, but each patrol team must consist of two members. And obviously, he is not following the rules. Lastly, there's that craftsman wearing artisanship commission clothing. He's unusually focused on checking that device. Good luck with Ford with picking them up. Target in this mind. Will be done easily. Let's go investigate. Oh, okay. It's just that monster. Uh, let's talk to them for a while. Who are you? Don't you know that Stargazer and Avalia is on lockdown now? Hey, chill out. They're just a few lost tourists. But Stargazer Navalia is the shipbuilding port of the Sienjo Lafu. If the Skyfaring Commission called for a lockdown, there should be official documents proving it, right? Official documents? <laughs> of course there are. The Cloud Knights are aware that some people have infiltrated this port. I'm just find it curious that they're. I mean, okay. I can understand if they're not uh, recognizing Feisha because she is from another ship, but why are they not recognizing Yao Jing? <laughs> I also already wondered that in the last patch, actually. Okay, this item that actually being like uh, Boris and his guys, but still. I feel like most of the love who should at least know how Yao Jing looks like. <sighs> that makes perfect sense. So you're now investigating the Borison? Yeah, 
We've received orders from the higher-ups, so we've blocked off this area to prevent any interference with our inspection. Thank you for your understanding. Okay. Hey, you there! Please refrain from wandering around Stargazer Navalia if you're not... Oh, ah, he is you, Lieutenant the Yenjing. Uh, Yenjing, not the Arching. Um... Oh, like these Chinese names for like the different ones would sound so similar, it's getting mixed up. I'm like mixing Zhao Zhe and Yang Xing here with their names, that's why Zhao Jing. <laughs> <laughs> this is silly of me. Um. I'm an official staff member assigned to investigate a peculiar. A peculiar issue. Yeah, we've had some unscheduled star skiffs being constructed at this dock in Stargazer Navalia. Could there have been an error in the production planning for the assembly line? This is just weird. I thought all the pending star skiffs from before the war dance had been scheduled already. I'm sorry, but I need to focus on my work right now. If you have any questions, we can discuss them later. I think he's safe. Because what he's investigating is probably like the ships the borrows and prepares in secret. <sighs> oh, Lieutenant Yen Xing and uh, General Fei Xiao. You're aware of the Boris in prison break, right? Yeah, I've received the news and I'll be on the alert. Looks like you've been keeping an eye on the Sky Splitter. Have you noticed anything unusual? No. Everything is normal on the ship. Nothing out of the ordinary. You've been observing the Sky Splitter for a while. Have you noticed anything? Didn't Fejo just ask Honestly, it? just watching the ship from here isn't too thrilling. I wish I could go on board and witness Lieutenant Yen Xing's contests. Speaking of which, Lieutenant Yen Xing, aren't you supposed to be on the Sky Splitter? Is it all right for you to be here instead? Thank you for your concern, but I have more pressing matters to attend to. <sighs> this is not a location for a Cloud Knight on guard duty, is it? Well, this spot offers a great view. Are you here to keep an eye on the Sky Splitter? You know what it is, Ted? Why are we asking questions we already like? At least glanced over we didn't need to talk before. <laughs> okay, kind of silly. So, it seems that some Borison have returned to Stargazer Navalia in disguise. The answer seems quite obvious. I would actually say this guy for any commission members. Yeah. That's my suspicion as well. Remember when I mentioned that the Cloud Knights blocked all relevant news to make it seem as if nothing happened? Stargazer Navalia is not under lockdown. But on the contrary, those staff members use Stargazer Navalia as on lockdown as an excuse to persuade us to leave. This contradicts the Cloud Knights' plans. Their flimsy disguise has been exposed. Even if they try to hide, there's no way they can escape us. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, at least when they're like making you like pick out the options and kind of just retreading the same, <laughs> the same as you just got, it's just kind of, it's like, eh, come on. I know, I know you can do better writing. That's why it's also like why I pointed out because it's a bit of an unusual writing style for them, but okay. Um. Why are you still here? As I said, Stargazer Navalia is on lockdown now. No, I never issued such an order. 
Who are you? Perhaps you haven't met me on the battlefield, but I am certain you've heard my name. Now I'm asking you a question, so answer me. Tell me. How many more of your comrades are here? Where were you planning to meet Hule? This woman. She's the general of the Yao Xing. What are you still waiting for? Attack her! Let's do what I do. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend, crush them! Now that's better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not spending money on Eidolons. I say with having an E6 Bronya, but that's just because I lost a lot of 50-50s to her. <laughs> Wait, I think she actually was E6. Can I see it from here? I mean, she has some like of her Eidolon abilities. Uh, oh Let the valuation begin. <laughs> this battle is unavoidable. I venture forth to hunt forever. Triumphant! Check. Victory is inevitable! Wait, what? Okay. Why is it not? Oh. Lend me your strength. You're falling apart on your own. Ah! Spend freely. <laughs> oh. I won't do. <laughs> Fangs and claws got dull. Ah! Easy, Numby. I was probably not to take the drink or pull out a Isn't she supposed to have like an 80% chance? Why don't you kill me? Because I need answers. <laughs> you were our war slave. So you should know us descendants of Duran. You want me to talk? <laughs> Fine. Try whatever you want. But I assure you, you won't get anything from me. Only fangs and blood. <laughs> if I were to do that, I wouldn't be any different from you. I am the arrow that pierces the wolf's heart. I grant you a swift death. I mean, yeah, it would give you a lot more uh, options to build stuff. Especially Topaz is actually quite a good high follow-up attack DPS. Eventually is a nice follow-up, uh, like, nice shield for follow-up parties. I'm actually not... I mean, I have Robin, but I'm actually not using her that much. I mean, with her ultimate boosting, like, everyone to act. Um, to, like, let your, all your party members immediately act. That's nice, and her attack buffs are nice, but other than that, I kind of feel like she's... She's alright, but, yeah. That's exactly what I desire. Wolves that leave the pack are prepared for the fate of never returning home. Okay. Maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's due to the way I've built her, but I'm not really noticing her impact that much. And the yeah, Arun May is actually quite nice, especially for like my. Um. Firefly party because it's just like 
break resistance over break uh, break resistance buffs is like or like break effect over break effect buffs stacked on top of each other. It's going hard, yeah. Okay. Will we continue? But sadly, you didn't catch my partner. He will alert them. Before you close your eyes, you should know that I allowed him to escape. Because he will lead the Cloud Knights to Hule's hideout. Hmm. Is this how you leave one side open? You let that Borison escape so you could track him? This is the most common hunting tactic used by Borison. I know the methods of these abominations all too well. They always leave an escape route for their prey, allowing them to flee in fear. Using their own tactics against them. Then yeah. they chase them like it's a game. Borison get great satisfaction from the last struggles of their victims. Have you witnessed these things firsthand? That guy called you a war slave. What exactly have you experienced? I mean, I'm not really like following along much with, uh, um, with Leeks, at least not actively, but if I casually picked him up, then I just casually picked him up. For a time, like, my my um, YouTube feed always has been, like, flooded with leaked characters for Hankai Impact Third <laughs> from, like, the Asian servers because they were ahead. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's alright. I don't mind it in knowing if like characters will po um, uh, pop up or if they will gain like better suits later on. I'm more interested than in how they are like actually integrated into the story. Just the knowledge of them being there is just actually a nice, yeah, more of like a nice push for anticipation of what's to come with them. So yeah. And yes, I played Hong Kong back third. For like eight, eight years now, yeah. So yeah, I've been playing Honkai Impact for it way before Genshin Impact or Star. Right? Well, just a hazy past that I can barely recollect. Yeah. Long ago. I was one of them. That's also the reason why, why I'm a bit more invested into Star Rails and Genshin story. Just to like to see how they are like connect. Because they do connect in ways. Even if that connection is a bit more vague with Genshin, but hey. The word Borison was only used to refer to those wolf masters. I'm a Foxian who was born in one of the fallen territories. The gameplay, the gameplay loop of Genshin is very tedious, so I can understand it. By now I'm also only playing it for story, nothing more. And there the gameplay loop doesn't really matter because it's also mainly just like cutscenes, like it's in style of Star Wars, so yeah. With like your occasional fight here and there in between, and a bit of like dungeon crawling with riddles, but I, it's not, not yeah. In some cases, in some times, it's dungeon crawling with riddles, but sometimes it's also overbuilt dungeon crawling. You could say. <laughs> in their eyes, we're mere consumables. Cannon fodder used to slow down Sienjo attacks on the battlefield. But you survived. And not only that, you became the general of the Yao Cheng. If I get the chance, I'd love to hear stories of your past, General. I mean, I'm like a, I'm like the highest adventure rank 60 there, but I'm I'm totally burned out on like Genjin. 
Genshin's gameplay. I'm also burnt out on like open world games in general. In like the recent years, I've become less and less a fan of open world games. Be it Genshin, be it Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Be it even Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, who took a bit more of an open world approach. Like all of kind of these open world aspects have been like a bit annoying to me. Speaking of stories, you've reminded me that now is not the time for them. Wildza, we've sent the warning eyes, from Stargaze and Lavalia. What's the situation on your end? I've found them. Zhao Cho is trying to stall Hule, and he signaled me to not reveal myself. Trust his judgment and keep watching. We'll be right there. I believe the warning we sent will stop Hule from attacking Stargazer Navalia. <sighs> what will he do next? The hunt is not over yet. Stay safe, Zhao Cho. Mm. I mean, from what I've seen, it's a bit more like muted and darker in like color scheme. Yeah, which I do not prefer that much, but I haven't seen much of Revealing Rays, really. And I'm just like, I don't need another gacha game to play. <laughs> Especially not an open world one, so I have not picked it up yet. I also haven't picked up Sandless Zone Zero for the same reason. I just do not want to go for another gacha game at the moment. And Genshin is quite slow at parts. Or like the, the open world gacha games that came out after that adopted a bit more faster gameplay style at least when it came to open world exploration. Giving you a lot more movement options and making movement faster and stuff like that. What do I all before the war dance comes in the exciting sentence? Save me! <laughs> I want to live, Doctor! I actually prefer past. I mean, except for like uh, turn based, or like uh, turn based combat, like it's here. Then they are like a turn slow, but. When it comes to action-based combat, I like it quite fast. <laughs> so I actually like, when I look at Sandless Zone Zero's combat, I think, I think like, this looks fun as hell. But it's not a gacha. Also, grinding with action, like action combat games based, yeah, game mechanics always tends to be more tedious. Because you have to be more active during grinding, while Star Rail's grinding due to like the turn-based uh, combat system is a lot more passive. Which is why I prefer Star Rail a lot more. Xiao Xiao, find the medical ingenium and give that kid a shot. Hurry! I, I see. How is the front line? The Borison Beast ships have already landed on the Feng Hu. It won't be long before this place is overrun as well. What about General Yueyu? Any news from her? I'm her healer. I should stay by her side at a time like this. She asked me to tell you that she's not coming back. She must protect the Cloud Pier telescope. General asks you to... to save that kid. The girl fought desperately just to bring us all back here alive. I've never seen such a brutal fighting style. Her body... it's like she was split open. Just like... Oh, her blood pressure is dropping! Do you hear me, Xiao Xiao? Loud and clear! Get me some tumble dust. We've got to start the operation right now! Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, it's a bit more strategic in that manner, but it mainly also comes to like what enemies you face. Um, the only thing with which uh, the gacha aspect is like annoying in that case because it robs you of options if you don't have all the characters. And what gacha games, of course, tend to do, all of like the current event stuff or like challenge stuff, always is like premiere uh, prepared or tailor made to the new characters and not the old ones. So you're always like lagging behind in that case. Yep. And yes, you're like me and pull every character and invest the money or that. Um, so yeah. This kind of what annoys me with that. That's why I just like prefer just way more prefer to play single player JRPGs with like turn based combat. You have a you have a set, a set amount of characters. You don't have to roll from them. You you are able you're usually able to get them through um, in like every playthrough unless you have like things with like if you get that one character you're locked out of the other but such but you you don't have like Okay, Zero Ray Chronicles 2 is an exception, but it's also not a turn based combat, but still. <laughs> but usually you don't have like an RNG based stuff of like getting party members. Usually it's like you have like a set way where you can obtain them if you not already obtain them just by default. And content usually is made to make you use. All of them are quite a wide variety of characters. I... I will bring her back! Is that why you're so determined to learn my secrets? Do you hear me, Chao Cho? Is he really mine? It's not just Chao Cho that I do. Right? Loud and clear. So she saved you all in that great battle on the Xiangzhou Fong Hu three decades ago. But to your surprise, you discovered her Boris and bloodline while she was at death's door. Moktok told me that she was a war slave who escaped from the Eclipse Pack. Oh, what a twist of fate. Turns out, she's from the same clan as I am. Now I understand. No wonder she displayed such astounding power, determination, and cruelty in battle. I didn't even Turns ask how it's all because of her force and bloodline. Mutt. Despicable Mutt. Oh no, you mean what I said about uh, about Jaja? Yeah, I was wondering if he. Um, I was wondering if he was telling that backstory we just saw, like that flashback to Huri, and apparently he did. I just was a bit wondering about that because I didn't like see an immediate reason for him to tell him that backstory in particular. But okay. <laughs> and she used the gift of her bloodline to destroy the Borison. <laughs> oh. Moon rage, a blessing for wolves, and a curse for foxes. For Borison to have their bodies torn apart by moon rage and transform into a beast oh, is the ultimate joy. But for you Foxians with poor regenerative abilities, it means certain death. Yeah, the, the, the backstory of Chaoja met Fei Shao when she like rescued a lot of people as a kid. That backstory. Like the flashback we just saw. 
Oh, with the burning fury in her heart, that Foxian general will eventually lose her sanity and indulge in endless bloodshed. The scars on her body will not be caused by enemy weapons, but by the immense power she can't withstand. One day, she will be torn apart and die as a monster. <laughs> and in I might, return I guess. for saving her life, you intend to give everything to solve this impossible puzzle. Hule, do you know the saddest thing about being a healer? All this time, I've devoted my life to bringing back those who sacrificed their lives to monsters like you. Why did you do lady specifically? <laughs> I exhausted myself, and my hands trembled. But I believed everything I did was meaningful. I mean... He is designed quite like a Bisholden, but yeah. He is a pretty fox. I will agree to that. But of course I would find, like, my maids in species. Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, they rushed into battle. And then I heard of their deaths. They died under your claws. In your jaws. Amidst the flames of crashing star skiffs. And under the Lux arrow of rainbow. Like a useless idiot. I saved a fish named Life. Out of the cauldron called death. Only to watch it struggle. And dive back into the boiling broth. Maybe I am. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so I asked myself. Why were they so eager to run toward their deaths? After they had recovered from their wounds. Why wouldn't they value their hard-won life? All the doubts left me feeling lost. <laughs> I can smell your desperation. All the way down to your bone marrow. Eventually, I realized that their deaths held value. They placed the weight of their sacrifice on the living, granting us strength. With a coin forged by their deaths, they exchanged something more in return. Everything I'm doing now, following you so closely, is just for one reason. Witnessing your death. With my own two eyes. I'm not gonna lie, I also don't, don't just like how Jaucha looks, I also really like his character. Like his personality and character, I totally dig it. Even your death has value. It will pave the way for a peaceful war dance. And a fully cured Feishao. Actually makes me quite relate to him, considering that I also quite often, if I play like co-op stuff with like, like worlds, I'm usually like the healer main and such. <laughs> I feel like I can kind of quite relate to, relate to him. On a personal level. Hmm. The thoughts in your pathetic head are hardly surprising. Did you already know this? 
Yes, I did. As Borison, we understand the value of death more than anyone. And as a healer who has witnessed so much death, you won't be swayed by fear. Mm, what a shame, what a shame. Your story actually sparked a trace of respect for you in my heart. <laughs> yeah. I find it so interesting that he's being called a healer the entire time the story. But he actually has no healing capabilities in his kit. I was like, finally, a fitting healer for an ability party. Hopefully he would at least be decently good at healing. Then he has just no he then it's like, nope, he has no healing at all. <laughs> Why? Mm. Also, we currently like you don't have like a healer, which has like a nicely fitting synergy with nihility parties. Like for nihility parties, you can like actually like, just literally use anyone. They have like almost equal value for the most part. And if he would have been like a proper healer in a way for nihility, I would have. Maint him so hard for the Hility Bodies. I mean, I'm still gonna use him a lot in the Hility Bodies because I just like his character, but yeah. It would actually, actually be nice. Like, his, the, the, the dots of his ultimate actually, like, give you the give you kind of life lead. I mean, he has dots, which are, like, just burn damage actually they could have done more of that can you even feel respect with your corrupted heart hmm. of course because i caught a whiff of my own kind in you unfortunately in the end you're still just a weak fox as the wolf's creed goes Gift the wolf a dead end, where new paths arise. Raise him to a doomed fate, where satiation lies. The cowards in forgotten corners meet their unworthy demise. Yet the valorous in brutal battles embrace their eternal prize. Not gonna lie, Penicone really pushed Nihility Party's heart. Particularly really pushed the Hility Parties hard. Especially with like a Black Sworn and Acheron. And also like like um parties were focused on break with like how many um how many trailer blazes super break stuff. Yep. For like the start of Paniconi, they uh, pushed the Hility hard with uh, Black Swan and Acheron, and after that they pushed like Super Breaking hard with like Firefly and Harmony Trailblazer. <laughs> These two party compositions like got a really big push in Paniconi. That's why I'm keeping you alive for now. I want to show you. How Burison truly respect their enemies. We will consume your flesh and blood, nourishing our own. We will crush your hopes and dreams, clearing a path for our hunt. Your feeble souls will witness a new future. A future that belongs to me. What I find funny though, for being focused around breaking, like the Firefly parties, the one, the, the, the most common party for which I use with her, like being Firefly, Harmony Trailblazer, Blazer, Ruin May, and a healer, in my case, Uho. Um, of that composition, 
they're actually quite bad at breaking these um how are they called these these trash cans <laughs> Lingshan is kind of a mix of a brake healer and um, of, of a follow-up healer. He is kind of going a bit of the two routes. Lingshan also, also synergizes a bit with follow-ups. My lord, we received a message. Our arrangement at Stargazer Navalia has been discovered. We must act quickly. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. <sighs> Mock talk. What's that noise? She doesn't buff it, but yeah, she has a bit of follow up capabilities. And she buffs break damage. But I feel like it synergizes. She's made to synergize a bit with Phasia. It's the Sky Splitter! The ship that the War Dance will be held on is about to set off! The Sky Faring Commission will clear the air routes! And if our Star Skiffs try to escape, we'll be spotted! Though she also could be a good healer for like the Firefly party composition, definitely. Calm down, Mock Talk. Look at you now, hiding and fearful. Where is your Boris and dignity? As I said, I'd sacrifice my dignity for your return. As long as you can come back to the Boris and Pax, there's still hope. Not, hope? Not even that. <sighs> the Boris and have forgotten the wolf's creed. Weak creatures put their hope in the strong, but the strong fight their way out. Not even that, I mean, I already played with a bit of Lingsha in the story earlier and looked for a skill kit. I can already see, like, um, a few nice synergies with existing characters which are already there. Bringing me back instead of choosing a new master only proves the decline of our pack. And as for the prophet who manipulated you into saving me, she's just a liar trying to use Doron's offspring. <sighs> Mock talk. Let me tell you how the Burisen will rise to power. We won't hide like rats in the streets of the Xiangzhou. We will be ravenous wolves, walking amongst a herd of lambs, with our fangs bared. I haven't even built Gallagher yet. <laughs> I see him like being used a lot for break teams, but I just uh, I don't really, I, I don't like his character much, so I didn't build Gallagher yet. <laughs> I just I just don't really want to use him. But Great Warhead, our packs are not here. We can't go to war like this. Our packs are not here. Wherever I go, everyone is the pack. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> Don't come any closer. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mock talk. We're the apex predators at the top of the hierarchy. As wolves, we create fear. We don't become servants to it. If you're blind to the path, I will be the crimson moon that lights the way for you. I don't care very much for carrying this with Fasia. <laughs> It, it doesn't give me a plus or a, uh, like it isn't it, it neither is a pro or con for a character or me it's just like yeah it's there 
Share my crimson blood with our brethren. Use it to infect those Foxians and strike fear into their hearts. Now, you devious monkey, come out and face me. Chacho. Mosa. Run. No, he can't run, and neither can you. <laughs> You've come at the right time, monkey of the Yao Ching. Tell your general. I think you're already there. Tell enough. her that I will unleash a massacre here, drowning the Xiechou La Fu in blood. From this moment on, wolves bearing my blood will hunt on every street, feasting on the followers of that devilish archer. Follow me, my cubs. We shall stride among the prey. If the wolf dead end, when new paths arise, raise him to a doom fate where satiation lies. The cowards in forgotten corners meet their unworthy demise. Yet the valorous in the brutal battles embrace their eternal prize. Hmm. Back to the chorus, I guess. Do you hear that? The rumble of the cannons. Oh, it brings back all the memories of past battles within me. My return will bring back the wolf's creed. In my own way, I shall save our weakened pack and restore it to its former glory. You're switching a lot of POEs this time around to many different people. The war is about to commence Sky Splitter. Oh. Oh, the Sky Splitter's gun salute is really loud. So this is what the war dance is actually like? I feel like my eardrums are going to burst. Well, how could they expect to attract people to come and watch if they didn't make a huge spectacle? <laughs> March. You haven't forgotten what you came to do, have you? I actually quite like the choice they made with the start of Panic Colony that they actually like make you switch POVs of different characters. It's a lot better than with Genshin because that way you can actually like give other characters a bit more time to shine as well. And yeah, especially the like a well done job in that in that case with Revenge Marine especially. As a representative of the Sienjo Lafu, I will defeat all challengers. That's the spirit. Sounds like you're all fired up. If you could just keep your legs from shaking so much, it would be more convincing, March. Although it's not the first time they did this, they also did it a bit um, with Sienju with Dan Hang a bit, but there. I mean, yeah, I would enjoy it more um, if they um, if they have let you gameplay with that specific character. If they would actually let you see the skills of the characters, especially for characters which are not released yet, but they're not letting you see their skills before a fight. You only can look at them in fight once you're actually in it. And then probably most of the time in a bad party composition because you don't know their skills. That was quite annoyed me really about that. As the saying goes, the disciple takes the toil of their master. Remember, you are here under the identity of a lawful sword master. Taking the place of your no good master Yen Ching as the ringmaster. But what am I supposed to do?
supposed to do if my opponent for this round is super talented and just wipes the floor with me in seconds? I'm still a beginner in swordplay. I don't know where I got the confidence when I agreed to help General Huayan. Come on, there's no need to worry about that. If you're defeated, then your opponent shall have to answer to me. Although, if that happens, the honor and the glory of the Sienjo Lawfu shall all be taken by the Jooming. <laughs> you said it wouldn't be to Yun Li, I would guess. Master Yun Li, please, I'm about to compete. Can you say something that will give me a little confidence? March, think about the great storms that you, nameless of the Express, have weathered along your many journeys. There's no doubt that you have faced far more terrifying enemies than your opponents here today, right? Fair enough. Don't you feel a lot more relaxed looking at it that way? Yeah, um... I mean, she's alright. I kind of have, like, a general dislike to characters who are just there to comedic relief, though. Why did to, to which for a moment would not want to allow you to send that message? <laughs> I don't even know myself. <laughs> I don't know, I guess the combination of real girl or something like that. Maybe because Automod blacks it for like reasons because you may be assuming someone's gender. <laughs> Maybe it's a thing like that. So yeah, I don't know. It's a re it's a it's a weird thing for Automod to flag. There's so much pressure. Oh, my stomach is really hurting. Maybe I should just drop out of the contest. You made a promise to my grandfather, and now you want to run away? <laughs> Get out there! Now! Yeah, but it so heavily depends on context that it's... that it's such a weird thing to outright block. I mean, yeah, in a way it can be, but in those cases, it's so heavily dependent on context, which in your like casual conversation shouldn't be an issue. And if it's if it is a big issue for you in, within more in just in casual conversations, then I think you have some more other problems than that going on. If you if you go to those extents to like really wanting to be like heard over stuff like that, then you have you have far different and worse problems going on than that. Being like heard over something like this small. Miss Yun Li, Miss March, this way, please. I was informed of your arrival by Madame Yukong and came to greet you personally. The news that you will be the ringmaster in place of Lieutenant Yan Ching has been made public, Miss March. Just now, as I passed the contestants' hall, I overheard them all discussing this news. The most common question I heard was, Who is March 7th? <laughs> yeah, what was was after the spell? Because that's an unusual name. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, it's like a big can of worms. It always depends on the situation and the context. 
and in most cases i would say it's fine except in like some specific cases and unless you're in an let's say in like a surrounding where this case can happen more often yeah which wasn't really that much of an issue and i mean some people just to uh, just choose wanting to be insulted by whatever you tell them no matter if it's like actually an insult or not some people just choose to be hurt over everything but yeah with that kind of people they have a lot of other different problems they should like first tackle them being feel, uh, instead of like feeling insulted over minor things like that Ask you this, how will you introduce yourself? Do you have something prepared? Mm. I am a disciple of Lieutenant Yan Ching. That means that I'm also technically a grand disciple of General Jing Yuan. When you put it like that, I'm actually a pretty big deal. Huh. You completely left my name out. How rude. <laughs> I see you are both quite relaxed. Impressive, given the imminent danger you face. You have people like that everywhere. It's just... It's just more of a, of a like a thing, how you choose yourself to deal with this stuff. Is that some people just choose to be insulted, just to choose to feel insulted by everything. And some people just do not have that much of an issue with it. And there is there are situations and contexts where I say, okay, valid that it's definitely an insult, but these situations are exceptionally rare. So yeah. Miss Yun Li's contestant information was registered for the war dance a long time ago. However, as a last minute entry, the Skyfaring Commission has taken care of the necessary procedures for you, Miss March 7th. Please follow this path. The contestant hall is just up ahead. Thank you, Miss Shikwei. Come, let's take a look around the contestant hall. So, oh. <laughs> this is the contestant hall. Oh, there are so many people! March, before the war dance begins, allow me to give you one more lesson. My grandfather always told me that a weapon mimics its master. That means that a person's weapon will reflect their habits and personality. You've seen me wield old metal before, haven't you? Tell me. What did you observe from that? I mean... If you want to go to that extreme, yeah. Some people literally, it, at least, it looks like they feel like it's soldered by every word you throw at them. Even if it seems totally nonsensical. And if you like, At some point, you will you have to like to des uh, decide where it's, uh, where it says okay. You go this far with banning stuff because it could be insulting and in, like rare or like heavily con uh, contextual situations. But then, at some point, it goes. Yeah, it gets to a point eventually where it's just like yeah then just stop speaking in general just do not talk anymore i guess stop banning sp uh, uh, ban speaking in general when it would be stupid <laughs> 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 
Anyhow. It's such a big rabbit hole and it is, it is like heavily reliant on context that is also like a hard topic to discuss in general. It always depends on the situation and context. That's all you can say. Uh, Master Yun Li's old metal is taller than a person. Being able to wield a weapon like that must mean that you have ridiculous strength, right? Observing the weapon that your opponent uses, assessing what kind of battle skills they excel at, and where their weaknesses lie, is the key to victory in battle. A shockingly heavy sword like mine, for example, is obviously not suited for a long, drawn-out battle. So, it would be best to find a way to drag the battle out. More casual. I'm usually not doing most of the post-game, uh, like, of, like, the the repeating hardcore difficulty stuff, you could say, like, the, the, the memory fragment stuff and such. Um, I'm more of a casual player. I don't follow the meta. I build parties to my liking or where I feel like okay these, these characters um, these characters fit together actually quite well uh, sometimes it happens to co to coincide with what's the matter because characters just naturally fit together that well in a party and it would be stupid not to build a party that totally does not synergize as well so yeah um, yeah. The most fun I have with, with Star Ray and it's like combat is like picking and choosing my own party and see what sticks and fits together. And using the characters I like and feel like are the most fun to use. Why would you tell me your weakness? You're in general, giving my experience with JRPGs in turn-based combat, most fights are not that hard for me, even if I have a bit more of a suboptimal party. So I'm not scared of like um, story fights being too hard for me. That's the only way to ensure that we have a fair fight, don't you think? I don't want to see you go and lose to someone else after all. Now is a perfect opportunity to learn how to evaluate your opponents. Let's use the people here in the contestants hall to practice. If you know yourself and know your enemy, you will not lose in a hundred battles. Know myself and know the enemy. Let's see, who should I ask first? I mean, you kind of have to focus. Uh, um, yeah, but you also can't make boss like fights or enemies too general because then you have like only a few, a few mechanics you can reuse to keep it general and be able to be fought with every party. You, you do need a lot of variety or combat gets there real quick, even in the story. So I can understand it that they make enemies that heavily focus on break and enemies that heavily focus on being debuffed. Enemies that maybe require you to have a shield par shielder party because you can counter them with shield, with like shielding their damage and stuff like that. That's also things just your casual single player JRPG with turn based combat does as well. You usually have a character who can deal with the mechanic in a way. And that's already is a thing where I say, okay, with that they are at least already giving you a hint what you should use. That's what I mean. 
with like what I meant earlier with like the PV um, switching and having like fights for these characters, especially if it's characters which are not released yet. Let me see their skills before the fight so I can see what they excel at, then I know what, what type of enemies I will face and I can plan my party around that. With Lingsha, I didn't have that opportunity earlier. You were not able to see, before having a fight with Lingsha, what her skill set is. With March, I already know her skills since we have her, had her since the previous patch, so we know we want a maybe a bit of break damage, but maybe we want a bit of follow up stuff. So yeah. Yep. I mean the do link to the Ohio lab site to the character bar guide and the do did follow that link. It still did not show me Linksha's skill. I think it worked with Um It worked with one character once. That they already had their skill info in the Hoyo Lab app, but they did not have it for Lingsha this time around. Which annoyed me. Yes. And I mean, they literally let you see the skills in game once you're in the fight. You can just see your the enemy and party info and can simply look at the skills there. So, I do not understand why they not let you watch the detailed info in this menu. Hi, this is Choka speaking. I do not understand this decision. Hmm. And it's the one the one minor um, decision which annoys me the hell out of this game. <laughs> um I can actually stick with Topaz. Um, I'm gonna do switch uh, Bronya on maybe for run me. Mm, usually the story ones are quite quite okay okay -ish build because they at least follow like their own recommendation mm. i think i actually can for the most part actually use this party with her should be fine i'm not gonna really change it up oh, i am not used to wearing clothes like this at all you're March 7th, the stand-in for Lieutenant Yun Cheng, correct? That's right. And you are? Mm. Ronya is alright. I just want to like use Bronya more again because she has been lately cool replaced quite a lot with like supports because she's not fitting that well with the new comms as she did in the past also with like characters with like sparkle with like a quite similar kit as her but give her like more skill points and do it a bit more aoe style you could say but yeah i do want to use bronya more again especially since i have her e6 it would be a waste not to use her. Oh yeah. I loved my almost uh almost mono quantum party with um with Bronia before. Uh but yeah, now it's a it's a pure mono quantum party with Sparkle. <laughs> it's a, just such a like a perfect fit though for this party and like this mono quantum team is still my main party. I just love this mono quantum party with Sealers so much. 
as you can see, I am the journalist entrusted with interviewing contestants on site. It's a simple yet quite powerful team comp. I see the Skyfaring Commission has really gone all out as the host. Interesting. Mm. It might be suboptimal, but as I said, I don't really care that much about matter. That's right! A big event like this just can't go ahead without a few of us running around. <laughs> Since the competition is getting started, could I ask you some questions that are on my mind? They're reusing a voice actor here from another character in the game. I'm just trying to think who it is. Oh, <laughs> great. First, the question that is on everyone's minds lieutenant yenching is not appearing in today's war dance i mean you can still hear the reporter this is just gossip from unreliable sources but i hear that lieutenant yenching is seriously injured is this true uh god who was it again It's uh, Su Shang, I think. It's no, wait, no, uh, is it? I think it's yeah. It must be Su Shang. I'm kind. I'm just like split between Su Shang and what was her name again? D D D D uh streamer girl I'm totally drawing a blank on her name. Yeah, Genivan, right. <laughs> Could you please tell me how these serious injuries came about? We can check it. We can check out the cutscene. <laughs> um. Wait, your master got himself seriously injured so he could withdraw from the competition and allow you to compete in his place? Wow. Not many masters would show such devotion to their disciples. Once the war dance begins, you will be challenged by master swordsmen from many different worlds, Miss March 7th. Are there any that you're looking forward to facing in particular? Wait, no. Is it Su Sheng or is it. It was just actually not reminded of Tao, actually. She has like the same vibe of Tao in her voice. May I ask who that might be? I'm also actually not following what I'm actually. Hu Tao. Uh, she's from Genjin. I'm actually not quite following following the what she's talking about because I'm so distracted by the voice right now. <laughs> um. Is this kind of a hint right here? Am I right with my sushi and guess? <laughs> Uh, who? Oh, are you talking about a contestant here today? Thank you very much for accepting my interview. Much appreciated. Uh, 
Let's actually double check. Uh, Sushang. Uh, I'm Sushong, and I recently joined no, the Cloud Knights. Uh, talk to me if you... No need to be polite. I can help any. Yeah, this is really Wuta. It's not us, uh... I'm really distracted by the voice right now. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's not about them either. <laughs> Going for the sus is better. My name is Queen Ifen. Yeah, it's not her. Where are you going? Okay, no, no it's just uh, it's a Genshin character. I'm immediately reminded of yeah, it's it's Hutao. I wanted to meet the great Lieutenant Yan Ching I've heard so much about, and finally cross blades with him myself. Who would have imagined that he would take a disciple and have her be the ringmaster in his place? This is no more than running away from a fight, and is a great dishonor to the Yao Ching. This last minute replacement, March 7th, who exactly is she? She's right in front of you. Contest from the Yao Ching, aside from the long sword on the back, also carried an electromagnetic hand crossbow. If I'd known I could use multiple weapons at once, I'd have brought my bow. <laughs> Hello, miss. Are you here to take part in the Ringmaster's challenge, too? That's right. I'm the March 7th that everyone's been talking about. What? Your March 7th? Don't worry. I'm a newbie swordmaster who's only been practicing the art of swordplay for half a month. That's not really helping your case, March, but okay. March 7th. Standing before you is a seasoned cloud knight who has practiced swordsmanship for over 200 years. Tricking the opponent into underestimating me is a valid tactic too, right? <laughs> I don't think that was your intention from the beginning though, March. I mean, yeah, March really summons her bow whenever she pleases anyway, so I wouldn't be surprised if she actually could still do it. She, I mean, she merely is just in a different outfit. <laughs> it doesn't mean that she's lost her bow. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, was there... Something you wanted to ask me? Ah, yes. Yeah, this is just a regular Cloud Knight Devastator Glaive. Oh, I oh, understand what's going on this March 7th in Miss Yun Lee. <laughs> I'm actually not a contestant. I'm just here as a security guard. The IBC's festival outfit? I don't rem don't know if I remember it how it looked like. <sighs> yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> I would have to look it up. Oh, it's all right. I can't bear to watch other people make things awkward. So I always try to keep the conversation going. But then I'm the one 
who ends up making things awkward. I've gotten used to it by now, so don't worry. There are still many guests arriving here. Please be cautious. Understood. The first round of the war dance is about to begin. Are you feeling okay, March? Me? I'm fine. As soon as I saw all these people gathered here, I suddenly felt weirdly relaxed. A Google search only like brings up like into the 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 the, the, uh, the dress one, right? This white bluish dress. Now I'm thinking, have I just seen it as a mod, or was it actually the one she drew wore in game? I don't think she actually wore it. Yeah, yeah, this is the dress uh, I just saw already. Yeah. yeah, that dress was nice. That dress was actually really nice and we're kind of actually sad that they've like not giving us it as a proper outfit for her to like swap into. Looking at these contestants, I suddenly feel a lot calmer for some reason. I understand why you wanted me to know myself and know my enemy. I don't feel as nervous as I did before. So, do you want to go out and see the ring? The thing is just also sometimes when I like see character outfits or try to remember men, I have seen quite a lot of like the, the, the modded outfits. <laughs> so yeah, I potentially mixed them up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Go and get your intel. <laughs> yeah, I don't care that much about maximizing my um, artifacts. How much mung beans oh no wait it was relics in this game right yeah it was relics in this game i don't really care about maximizing these i just put on the, the, the relics which are uh, which like fit the most for the character i'm currently on level them up and then you should just let them stick with them <laughs> like my sealer still has. Wait. Still has like this very old one. <laughs> and I don't really intend moving you off it sometime soon, so. Yeah. I might start um, start optimizing them when I've like leveled up all of my characters, but this will still take a while. Maybe it's because you spent so much time with Tamamo that much time I had the urge to interrogate the bench. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but my servant is Taumo, and her mental condition isn't that bad. Hey! What are you implying about my mental condition game? Huh? Now, um, if there's anything you want to ask, hurry up, or my servant's version and you will come back. The bench remained silent, having witnessed the presence of many formidable figures, including the once renowned sword champion of the law of who. The bench gazed at March 7th back, leaving behind a drop of sweat. That's enough knowing the enemy for now. <laughs> Come on, I want to see what the ring looks like. <laughs> it is kind of this weird thing where Firefly 
continues to like run into the tray when you play play out of uh, Firefly's PUV on like that that one ship and um, always run into the MC for whatever reason and see him do the most stupidest thing. Uh, like the one that's new with this update? Nah. I'm doing the, the, the story before the event. If you mean the, the, the March 7 training arc, I did that one, yeah. Dating? Yeah, why not? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's saying I am not a contestant. Got it. Well, looks like she's done with her questions. <laughs> That's enough knowing the enemy for now. Come on, I want to see what the ring looks like. I will be expecting with it anticipation. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was like. That one thing, I think it was with like the origami birds, where, where like the the, 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 the trail players did something stupid with the, with the origami birds. And it was just like, what the fuck, why are we like embodying this character? I kind of do not want to anymore after hmm. watching this. Uh, yeah, where you play for out of Firefly's POV for a bit. I actually could be running around with Topa, so I actually like uh, Nambi can tell me where the chests are. Wow, so this is what it's like from the spectator seats? Look over there. That's the ring we'll be standing on. Master Yun Li, I I'm getting nervous again. Can I really do this? Well, too late for nerves now. It's almost time. Almost time for what? I know, but still, I like to pick up everything that's on the way. Think about the mission General Huayan gave me. Oh, my heart starts racing like crazy. What do I do, Master Yunli? Means less stuff I need to pick up when I go through it the second time. <laughs> it's when it stops speeding that we need to worry. <laughs> Just take in the atmosphere and prepare yourself. I have to leave for a moment and do some inspections around the ship. This was also part of Grandpa's orders. I wonder how Master Yan Ching is doing over there. Hey, focus. Mm -mm -mm. General, report! The teams are in position, and the Skyfaring Commission has taken control of the Starskip lanes. Activate all side cranes and have them scan everyone coming in and out of the port. Remain vigilant at all times. Any suspicious movements must be suppressed as quickly as possible before the situation gets out of hand. I really like Feishao, but I, I mean, looking at me, it should be obvious that it would like Feishao. <laughs> Yes, General. You two, follow me. Moza signals nearby, but we lost contact just a moment ago. Could that mean he will be fine? Cloud Knights, search for the target. I mean, it should be right over here. All of you, get out of my way. Hmm. 
Wait. Don't go any closer. General, I failed you. That mad dog left me here as... A declaration of war. That's right. I've been holding back the urge to slit his throat all this time. Well, Lord Hule ordered us to remain here, just to see. Huh? What do you mean with that? If you, the great Merlin's Claw, mortal enemy of the Forison, are able to join him in a little hunting game. <sighs> oh, get out of my... Okay, you just... You had to just had a typo, that's why I was confused. <laughs> yeah, no, I kind of beat for Rosa to say that. Hunting is not a game. It is a battle of life and death. Are you ready for your death? Abomination? Die, you lovely bitch! Die! Save your breath! Never hesitate! Keep love. Watch your head! Let the valuation begin! I venture forth to hunt. Forever. Triumphant! Victory is inevitable. I only look like took like one action so far in this battle. <laughs> like one, like one active action. The market always fluctuates. Whenever you're ready. All right, game. Sure, I'll play along. I like face shower already. There's always a weakness. Why is she? I want to double check. Uh... After any other other characters, basic check on enemy that has a. Oh, when, when it has a wind weakness, I forgot about that part. Lend me your strength. The fearless knows not fear. I won't do. And yep, I do, but more often on YouTube well, in German that, than in English. Are you okay? English. I wasn't able to save Zhao Chao. Hule was more cunning and powerful than I imagined. Tell me, how is he planning to declare this war against me? With a one-on-one -on -one duel? Or with a hostage exchange, maybe? Hule is planning on attacking the bustling streets of the Xianzhou Lawfu. What did you just say? Impossible. Even if there is still undercover Borison that we haven't sniffed out, Hule can't have more right, than a few dozen you. people. How is he planning on simultaneously attacking the streets of the Xianzhou Lawfu? He has an ace up his sleeve. Hule's body holds a plague mark passed down through generations of Borison. I've seen him convert a foxy into a Borison wolf trooper with my own eyes. This is Hule's declaration of war. His blood. It can cause Foxians to rapidly transform and lose their minds. He has passed his blood to his minions and is planning to spread it across the law Fu and stir up panic. He wants to encircle us in one fell swoop. This beast is truly unpredictable. Contact the Skyfaring Commission and the Cloud Knights right away. Have them enforce a traffic ban and order all Foxians to remain indoors until further notice. The moment you see your enemy's declaration of war, it means that they have already begun to take action. But... If Hule succeeds in getting this panic to spread. Do you remember what I told you before? Hunting is about thinking the same way as your prey, not just mindlessly chasing after them. What Hule wants is to see everyone on the Lawfu descend into panic. He wants to see us lose our minds and waste our limited manpower scouring every inch of the Lawfu for signs of an attack until we exhaust ourselves. 
It's like that party game that the people of the Yaoqing love to play. They hide an object under one of several bowls, then move the bowls around and have you guess which one the object is underneath. The way I see it, game. this is all nothing more than misdirection. <sighs> no matter what Hule does, there is one truth that cannot be changed. He is trapped aboard the Sienjo Lothu. The only way for him to escape is to find a ship. Right now, the only ship he'd be able to see is the Sky Splitter. In his eyes, that ship is full of countless hostages. That would be the best place for him to go. So, that will also be our final battlefield. But if we're wrong about this, if he goes somewhere else, or if he does as he said he would, and his minions infect the Foxians everywhere with wolf blood, what do we do then? I feel like Faisal has to Are we just supposed right to abandon here. those less likely locations? This is another lesson that you must learn outside of sword play. Weighing your options and making a decision. There are always questions that we will ask ourselves, but never be able to answer. Before making a decision, we must destroy any hesitation that we are holding on to. Once we make a decision, we must fight off any regrets. There is a chance that we will make the wrong decision and allow our allies to be sacrificed in vain. There is a chance that we will predict our enemies' movements correctly, yet underestimate their strength and be overwhelmed in battle. But being lost in hesitation and failing to take any action will always be more harmful than taking the wrong path. We must make a decision, no matter what. Everyone, listen up. I will personally take charge of Starskiff Haven, evacuate the people, and prepare for any possible attacks. I will do my best to ensure that things are safe on the ground. Nameless, please lend us your strength as you did when the Ambrosial Arbor was reborn. I need you and Wildza to go in search of Zhao Cho. Carol, please entrust me with the safety of the Sky Splitter. I was originally meant to participate in the tournament, so now it is only right that I return to the Sky Splitter. Kule does come to attack the Sky Splitter. Lieutenant Yang Ching, I need you to hold him there until I am able to arrive. Please rest assured, General. If he dares step foot on the Sky Splitter, I, Yang Ching, swear on the blade in my hands that he shall not escape. As the guardians set off to the various locations, they swiftly began to. Oh, no. Wow. Cloud Knights! The Borsin have arrogantly decided to challenge us on Sienjo territory. They vow that they will unleash a bloodbath along the streets of the Sienjo. The unarmed civilians of the Sienjo and countless visitors from afar are under our protection. Let me ask you, as Cloud Knights, will we allow the Borsin to succeed with their plan? Nope. Be on your guard. Calling Starskip Haven. Have all Cloud Knights be on full alert for Borson attacks. Seychelles, the ports of Starskip Haven are crawling with wolf-like creatures. They're moving fast. Hold them back. I will be there immediately. Alright. <laughs> She's literally coming out of the ship. <laughs> there you are, Fei Shao. Madam Yukong. After 30 years, we find ourselves fighting side by side once more. It's been a while since I've let loose. Let's get this started. Remember, you are still on the Law Fu. Try not to go too wild. Well, whatever we mean, we will actually be going on our wolf hunt. It's next time. It's getting quite late. A 
short respite, then time for the next fight. So yeah, we will be continuing on with that next time, even though it's getting a bit heated now. But I know if we kind of keep going on for now, we are just going to be like tracked into fights or rough fights and this will take, go on for much longer. And I cannot allow myself to be <laughs> awake for that long, thanks to having work. So yeah. Let's see if there's actually anyone fun around to raid. Uh, Yeah, I don't know if you're really, but I'm also not gonna like start looking for someone right now. So I will just end it here, dude. We'll definitely be continuing on next time. Um, if I have anything that's going on. And also, probably, hopefully, actually jump into this one here. But for that, we also still have to do like some prerequisite missions. Um, yeah. But we actually. We'll definitely jump into that also next time. At least I hope, or the story is just taking that much longer. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely was more fun if the stream was a bit more active this time around when it came to chatters. So, support and feedback is very much appreciated. And hopefully, we will see each other again next time. Until then, and bye bye.